right. I call the regular meeting of the Millican Board of Trustees for October 14, oh, 2020 yeah. to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Will the acting town clerk please call roll? Yes, ma'am. Trustee Trailer? Here. Trustee Wakeman? Here. Trustee Rodriguez? Here. Trustee Grandquist? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Here. And Mayor Austin? Here. Does anyone have any additions or deletions to the agenda? Yeah, Mayor, I guess we need to add this fence this under the discussion agenda. Okay. The uh, fence and walls, section 16.2-490. All right. Any other changes? I'll take a motion to approve. I move to approve the changes. Second it. Acting Town Clerk, please call for a vote. Uh, Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. Trustee Grandquist? Yes. Mayor Austin? Yes. <coughs> Motion passed. Thank you. Do we have any citizens' comments tonight? <coughs> Anybody want to get up and speak? Okay, hearing none, we'll skip over citizens' comment. And we will go to the meeting minutes. Is there any discussion or comments on the meeting minutes of September 23rd, 2020? I'll take a motion to approve. I move to approve September 23rd meeting, note, <coughs> meeting minutes. <coughs> Second. Acting town clerk, please call for a vote. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Grandquist? <laughs> yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. And Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Any discussion or comments on the meeting minutes of October 6, 2020? I move to approve the minutes of the October 6, 2020 special meeting. Second. Acting Town Clerk, please call for a vote. Trustee Grandquist? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Uh, Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. And Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Next up, we will have a report from our interim town administrator, Cheryl Powell. Yes, thank you, Mayor and Trustees. Um, short report this week. Um, <coughs> our Parks Department, um, uh, Keith is going to be having Evergreen Skate Park, who's the, the <coughs> company that designed the park and, and put it in place, um, evaluate the park for any repairs that need to be done. He did mention there is one area that's come loose, and so it's best to have the experts fix that and to look around and see if there's any other areas. Um, it is a GOCO grant park, so we need to keep it maintained for 25 years, so the best people to do that is um, this company. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he'll be, um, he did send him an email. I don't know if you've heard back from him yet or not, so I'll keep you apprised. Yes, ma'am. Would that include also painting? The they could possibly do that. Um, I don't know what, or if they could tell our guys how to do that. Okay. Um, so that'll be a discussion, and we did mention, we did talk about that yesterday at staff, too. Thank you. I got one question on that. Yes, the top rail, it was recommended that we paint that every year to okay. preserve that concrete from cracking. Okay. I don't think we've been doing that. Probably they didn't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. I remember it was part of the warranty okay. originally. And that was with Evergreen? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm sure when they come out, they'll look at everything and, and let Keith know. Okay. Since we've been through a couple of other people since the time that they've... Uh, completed the park. Okay. But yes, thank you. <coughs> I'm making notes. 
Um, sprinkler uh, blowouts are almost complete. Uh, there was electrical break at Lola Park. Um, we've had an electrician consulted and the break um, has been narrowed down to a, a specific area and so then we'll um, look at what it would be to repair it. And this is for just the electric um, for uh, the outlets and so on that we have at Lola Park. To get that fixed, um, streets, they're working on alleys still. Um, they finished up a project on County Road 46 regarding, uh, regarding the manholes. And so that's been finished. Um, I know Scott met with the Historical Society yesterday, or t excuse me, today, um, to look at the basement at the uh, uh, Heritage House in order to get, um, they're needing some additional outlets down there and just to finish work on that basement, um, drywall and so on. So uh, they do have a contractor um, that they had chosen for part of it, but since it's a commercial building and we have to have a certified electrician install the electrical, but um, this person could do all the finish work then after that, um, if that's what they so choose. So that'll be underway as soon as we can get an electrician in there to have that done. These ladies have been waiting for this project for a while, so. Okay. Um, Good. One thing I do want to talk about real briefly, if I might, um, you know, Judge England uh, presented us with his resignation letter. Um, he will be able to conduct court until the end of the month. Um, Teresa Ablo has, you know, uh, offered to fill in in areas when he's not been available. We've also had another gentleman, um, Judge Stuart Olive that I've heard good reports from, from the um, court clerk and um, the rest of the staff uh, with court. So I just uh, want to know if you're wanting us to go out again for an RFP or sh we should talk to Stuart Olive and have him come in and speak to you if he's available to do this um, and or Teresa Ablo. I think it was a hard choice between the two of them, and it mm -hmm. came down to <coughs> Teresa Ablo's schedule. Time, yeah. I think we should ask her again, what does her schedule look like? Um, and what it would take for us to adjust mm -hmm. and her. I mean, if there's still a scheduling problem, then we would probably want to interview Judge Olive. I know I saw him in court once, and he was he was good, so. But that would be my recommendation. What does the rest of the board think? I would agree. It was a very tough decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would say if, if she can't do it, then you feel comfortable with, with uh, Judge Olive, uh, go ahead and uh, visit with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See if it's something he's interested in. Um, and I think it might even be a good idea if he does have availability for you to still speak with him, even if Teresa can, just because it would, he would be a good backup for her. Yeah. So oh, that okay. way you know who he is. Yeah. So we'll check on their schedules and, and see um, if mm -hmm. one, if Teresa can, um, and if he can. And then we'll get something set up uh, to, so you can because I did like the email we received from her. Mm -hmm. She appreciated our time. She understood how we made the decision. And uh, I, I think she's a very gracious person. So, Are they both interested? Or do um, we know? We're just feeling that out. Yeah. Okay. Seeing if um, Judge Olive is, I know he enjoyed it, um, <laughs> but it depends on his schedule. Yeah. Too, so. So I need to be an agenda item for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just didn't okay. um, know what your feelings were if you wanted us to go out for our <coughs> or to look at these two. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's all I have. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. Action agenda. We've got an approval of the 2019 audited financial statements. Wade Nickerson, finance director, and Tyra Litzel from our auditing firm, BDO. 
Hello. I just want to introduce uh, Tyra Littell from uh, BDO. She was the uh, lead auditor, uh, manager on our audit this year, and I'll let her uh, take over from here. Thank you for having me. So I'm going to go through two documents tonight. Um, one of them is our uh, audit wrap-up, which is our required communication to those charged with government, as well as the audited financial statements. Um, before I get too far, I just want to make sure that you're able to hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. Sounds good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, if that is okay. Um, it looks like it is not uh, allowing me to do that, but um, I do have the, the audit wrap document that I can share my screen um, where I'll just walk through it and then the financial statements itself. Um, so our audit wrap document is the our required communication to those charged with governance, and in this case it is the board of directors um, for the town of Milliken. Um, this just confirms um, a lot of the information that we have as part of our audit. Um, the status of our audit is that we have completed the audit of the financial statements as of December 31st, 2019. We did issue those financial statements on September 30th. Those were filed with the state auditor's office. Um, the scope of our work was substantially the same as was for, um, previously reported. Um, we did change some of our audit procedures. We did our audit procedures remotely this year due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, I just want to point out that in the financial statements itself, our auditor's report does have an emphasis of matter um, relating to the uh, COVID outbreak, just relating to the uncertainty. Um, this year, we also did single audit procedures. Um, the, the, the town did have um, a pretty large FEMA grant that was fully finished up relating to the Josephine project um, in 2019. So we did additional compliance procedures relating to that uh, project in terms of the FEMA requirements. Um, and we did issue an unmodified opinion on the compliance requirements as well. Um, those are both clean opinions. That is what the, the town is always striving to accomplish. Um, there weren't any significant changes to the accounting practices and policies for the town this year, and no significant changes to the estimates. Um, we do a risk-based audit approach where we look at um, large balances as well as uh, higher risk areas. Um, we look at revenue recognition for the town um, to make sure that revenue is reported in the proper year. We also look at the accounts receivables and any allowance, um, but the town has deemed that their receivables um, are assured that there is no allowance that's made. Um, capital assets of the town are a significant area of the town's financial statements. So we pay attention to the newly um, new costs that are added to capital assets as well as depreciation. The town does have long-term debt totaling about $1.5 million, um, including premiums and compensated absences for their governmental activities. And business type activities is about $6.8 million, including a premium. So we do look at those balances. We confirm the balances. Um, making sure that they're paid in accordance with the maturity. The town does have two pension plans that is reported within the financial statements. Um, those are two different cost sharing plans with FPPA that administers them. Like I mentioned, we did single audit procedures. Um, we have we didn't identify any going concerns, um, and estimates were determined to be reasonable for the bias. Um, we did have a several audit adjusting entries this year as well as um, one past audit adjusting entry. Um, so if we continue on to the internal controls over financial reporting, we are required to gain an understanding of the internal controls of the town as part of our audit process and that helps drive our planned audit approach um, as well as the testing areas that we're going to do. We are required to communicate to those charged with governance any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses in those um, internal controls. Um, we did identify a material weakness relating to the journal entries that were required to be posted 
Um, we did post entries relating to receivables as well as the related revenue, um, capital assets, um, some of the debt transactions. So we had to post these in order to fairly present the financial statements. This finding, because it is material weakness in internal control over financial reporting, is included in the single audit report as well. Um, management's response was included in there. Um, and that's also included in the audit rack document. Um, just some other required communications. Just to, you know, we are independent of both fact and appearance with the town. Um, there were no significant difficulties, no uh, disagreements with management. We aren't aware of any other consultations. Um, so that really concludes our um, required communications. Um, I know you have had a chance to look at the financial statements. You have received those. Um, I'm probably not going to go into those in a lot of detail unless there are specific questions or if you would like me to, I'm more than happy to do that as well. Um, so I'm just open for any questions that the, the board might have. Okay. <clears throat> Let's start off with, um, if I may, we were late with our audit uh, again. Can you expound on why we were so late in filing? I mean, I think we came down to filing at 1045 at night on the day it was finally due. Can you give us an idea why? Um, yes. So this year was an unusual year just related to COVID. We did our procedures. We were scheduled to do the procedures. Um, and we were working on the audit back then, and there was some items, particularly capital assets, um, that we didn't receive at that time. Um, when we did receive them, you know, our audits kind of got contracted um, due to the COVID. Um, we did have uh, the people that were on this engagement last year um, were no longer with our firm. Um, so we had turnover, um, we had delays. Um, in receiving information, but then once we received it, we had delays in our timing of when we were able to schedule those. And when I started to work on the financial statements and then looking through um, the testing areas, we started noticing that we had to post significant entries that was, you know, some questions back and forth relating to the grants. Um, relating to some other areas that just caused more time than we expected when we were able to schedule the audit again and complete the audit procedures. Um, so yes, we did meet the deadline, but it was very um, late in submission. Um, and you know, going forward, we'll make sure that we are in better communication. When we, so as you know, um, ACM did transition over to BEO as of August 1st this year. Um, with that transition over, um, you know, there was some, um, just like we were, our, our system was down for several days. I mean, there's a lot of different factors that, that happened with that transition. But as, a, as BEO, we are committed to meeting deadlines. Um, we are committed to meeting deadlines uh, going forward. And we will make sure that we are in communication with Wade and Courtney um, relating to any hiccups that come up along the way um, that we're adjusting that schedule if we need to. But um, I would say that this was almost like a perfect storm of factors that contributed to this uh, in a lot of different ways. So. Um, I sincerely apologize, and I will am committed to making sure this doesn't happen going forward. Well, I think we'd like to get a little more clarification. You requested documentation, and then you had trouble receiving it, or you had a system issue? <clears throat> yeah, I, I can speak to some of this also. Um, so when we had our... When, as Tyra said, when we had our audit scheduled, um, we were work, trying to work with the consultant um, who was previously engaged by the town, um, and we didn't didn't get a lot of uh, capital asset information, work papers, that type of stuff. So when the audit was scheduled, we didn't have that information. So I'm then, sorry, wait a minute. you didn't have the capital asset information. Not all of it, no. I was working through it as much as I could, but 
Um, the work papers were with with Pinnacle Consulting, um, and so when we got the we got those late in the game, and that took time to for me to become familiar with them and get it to them. So that delayed <clears throat> that delayed the completion of, as Tyra said, a very major portion of of our audit is, are the capital assets. I'm sorry, but aren't the capital assets list inside um, the depreciation schedule? of assets that you have, so you would have a copy of the tax return, would you not? I mean, with the asset listing in there? So, so you're... I misunderstood your question. It's okay. <clears throat> I'm just curious, information should have been in the tax return for prior years, so we should have been able to retrieve what was in there from prior years. Well, my misunderstanding. The, the information is there, the work papers are not. It's two different things. Yeah, I can I can attempt to recreate, because everything in, everything in our financial statement is is combining categories. We have equipment, we have land. But the detail is, yeah, we've got 70 pieces of equipment and I need that detail. And in order for me to get that information and work through it, it was delayed. So um, and, and so that that was not ready when when a, ACM was was ready to do our audit. So we didn't make copies of the backup that was submitted to the CPA or the prior CPA is what you're saying. Usually I make, so in my accounting experience that I have when I give supporting documentation or work of documentations to a CPA, I also make an additional copy because of course they get lost. So did we not do that? You're saying you didn't have the work papers? No. So we didn't have copies of the work papers? Is that a, not what from I'm prior, understanding? Not from prior year, correct. Okay. Do we have all the prior years now from Pinnacle? Yes, I believe so, yes. I gotta tell you, I, I'm, I'm shocked that we would give them our work papers and not have well, copies here. You have to understand that Pinnacle was doing the work. They may it, have been doing the work, but why wouldn't we keep the originals here? Um, they were created by Pinnacle, I believe. A lot of them were created and updated by Pinnacle. It was actually their work paper more so than it was ours. We, we paid them so it's ours. It's not I it's agree, ours. but we have to get that in. And when we did, then I was able to do my best to work through it. And so wouldn't BDO also have whatever we had in the prior year? Um, not, a, I don't believe they have that in those details. Not, not in that granular detail, because they don't need it. Does Pinnacle have any more of our work papers that we need? Not, to, not to my knowledge, no. And that that was a lot of the difficulty for for myself coming in new was was trying to follow up um, on someone else's work, um, you know, and so that was. Like I said, I'm, I'm not. I'll take I'll take some of the blame for the delay. It was because I'm trying to get familiar, also as well as trying to figure out um, how things have been done in the past to make them roll forward. Because I know I did sign some checks for Pinnacle for this year. Yep. So. Yep. And it was related to audit. Yep. And that, and that was that that was them spending the time getting us the documents we needed. Yes, ma'am. So we paid them to give us the documents that we should have already had I, here. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. It's kind of like it's kind of like when we have to pay the engineers to get the final plans. I mean, we pay them to do the work and then we pay them for the plans. It's it's very similar to that. I'm not no, I I'm not saying I when agree with it, but it the happens. Work, we should have the documentation in house. Yeah. That I would never give somebody an original. We should always have copies here, always. I mean, that's just common. Well, but the practices. originals were. They, they were doing the originals. They were doing the originals. They were completing the originals. Town staff was not completing the originals. This is the first year for several years the town staff has done the work on the originals. I mean, yeah, it's not like we sent it away and then they worked on it and got, I mean, they created the originals. Okay, so now we've established some of the problems with being late. We didn't have our documentation. Uh, Tyra, can you tell us a little bit more about these adjusting entries, uh, journal entries that you 
Because it's in the report. I had marked it. Um, yes. So the adjusting entries that we had, um, there were, I mean, so the adjusting entries that we are listing out are the ones that we identified as part of our audit. Um, the, the town did also provide us with uh, several adjusting entries after we received the original power balance that they identified as part of their uh, closeout as well. But, um, we had to, when we were looking at the financial statements, there was some um, differences in the budget to actuals um, between some of the funds. Uh, and it was identified that, um, that the, like the Josephine Storm Sewer infrastructure was actually budgeted for in the stormwater fund, but it was originally reported in the grants fund, so we had to move um, some of those from those revenue receivable as well as the expenditures um, out of the grants fund into the storm um, water fund. Um, we did get the capital asset, when we got the capital asset detail, um, it, we were able to tie everything out, but then the entry to actually report it within the um, balance wasn't um, actually reported. We did have to move some of the, the debt. Um, so if you think about the, the debt in the, the general fund or the debt service fund, it's, you know, the principal is reported as a, a reduction, um, but in the, or a principal payment for it, but in the um, stormwater fund, we had to show it as actually a reduction to the, to the premium, or in the water fund, I apologize. Um, there were several discussions that we had to do relating to some of the grants receivables um, since they hadn't, uh, those balances hadn't changed from prior year um, to truly identify for the grants what was owed still um, as part of some of those. And then just some due to do funds, I think a, a lot of them was relating to the grants receivable as well. And then just uh, cleaning up some of the due to do from. So those are the the journal entries that we that we have to post um, relating to the to the travel. Tyra, how many adjusting entries were completed? Do you know? Um, for the actual audit, the ones we identified. We had 11, um, but that does not include the ones that they identified um, after we had received the original trial balance. Um, I can find that out. Yeah, there are probably, there are probably, I'm gonna say at least eight to 10 more. Wow, that's a lot. How many so do we, we normally have? originally started, we started with the original trial balance. And so the, the entries were coming in, you know, after we had done the audit. Um, so there was a delay on the front end. And I will, you know, take responsibility from the back end side that we had a delay on our end to, to finalize everything. Um, so I think that, like I said, in a lot of ways, this kind of, Unfortunately, it was like a perfect storm with the COVID and some of the delays on the front end and then the delays on the back end on our side. So um, I think going forward, now that we're there, and we have, you know, a good, and this was my first year back on this engagement. I have been off of it for several years. I think going forward, we have a really good starting point that this won't happen again going forward. I have a question on the uh, <clears throat> the journal entries that you had to do, the corrective entries. I'm not an accountant, so I don't know all this, but were these entries caused by the previous Pinnacle or whoever was doing the books? Is that Was there deficiencies there, or were the deficiencies, uh, once we took it in-house, then there were some gaps there? Were, what caused these, do we know what caused the entries or the, the need for these corrections? I, I can speak to that from, okay. from what I, from my opinion. So normally you have work, 
the way I've always done. Mm -hmm. You have work papers, and and every year you have work papers, and you have a checklist, and you go down. And you're like, okay, I've got to do these <clears throat> twenty journal entries every year at year end. I know, I know that's what I'm doing. And so you have your work papers, you have a checklist, and you know that's what you're going to do every year. We didn't have that. I just, I, I mean, that's all I can say. We didn't have that. So a lot of what was missed was stuff that is now on my checklist mm. so that we don't miss it next year. You know, uh, like, like Tyra mentioned, the capital asset piece, I just missed it. Um, you know, moving, moving in the enterprise funds, moving the capital assets from the expense to an asset. That, those types of, I just missed it because I didn't, I, I, nothing was there. Um, and so as, as we've worked through this, that's where I've set up my checklist for future years to know, hey, I've got to do A, B, C, and D. And did you not have that because of the prior, that they, they did not hand off sufficient well, information to you? I think, I, I won't say it was insufficient information. I think it's a difference of having a contracted right. finance person versus having an in-house finance person. Mm -hmm. I think that's really what it is because probably, you know, I, I would assume that there are accountant people also, the consultants are, that I, they probably had checklists. But those are their checklists. Those aren't our checklists. And so we're trying to work through all of that. Um, like Tyra said, we'll be a lot better next year because all of that stuff's already in process to be done for next for well, the 2020 audit. Who closed the 2019 books, Pinnacle or you? Because you, you were with us at yeah. 2019, right? Yeah. Um, it was a little bit of a combination. That's, you know, because she was working on some of the um, fourth quarter. She was working on some of the fourth quarter um, entries. Uh, but for the most part, it was closed out by me, okay. by, by staff here. Yes. I guess my only other question is going to be is what other steps has BDO taken to ensure that we're not late again next year? Because it might, you know, this would be year two. I just want to make sure that we're on time next year. Um, correct. So, again, I can't speak for the 2018 audit since I wasn't there. Um, but going forward, I think that I would like to schedule quarterly meetings um, with Wade and Courtney um, throughout the year just to kind of touch base to make sure that we know um, um, from our end, you know, what's going on at the town. Um, making sure that we schedule interim procedures. I don't think that we scheduled interim procedures this last year. Um, so we can do some of the testing, some of the groundwork, um, and then just having that open dialogue, making sure that we're committed and have in place, you know, when you guys want to issue, if it is June, if it is May, like, going backwards from there. Um, I don't think that we, we talked about it at our initial meeting, but I don't think we had specific dates that we set up. And sometimes when that happens, you know, things get overlooked or you, I think if we put it in everybody's calendars, of, you know, this is the date that I am expecting in BDO to provide the financial statements. And then this is the date that we will have it reviewed and the MBA turn around. So um, I will attest that this, this issue delay um, was really stressful on my end, and I really never want to go through that again as well, as I am sure that the weight doesn't either. So um, we will do whatever we need to do to make sure that doesn't happen again. Thank you. Okay, so just to wrap up, I want to make sure our material weaknesses were just in the journal entries. There were no other material weaknesses. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Board members have any other? I don't have any. 
Uh, I like the checking in um, quarterly. That's a and, great idea. And I, I think, uh, no, I think ha ha having me on staff will help. It'll give, uh, it'll give Courtney and I more time to focus on, focus on this type of stuff. Um, where I think I think when you use when you use outside um, consultants expertise for this sometimes you miss that piece um, and so that's why that's why I I don't say guarantee but I mean we're gonna have a lot better year next year it's gonna be a lot better mm -hmm. because we have put these things in place but I agree I think it's just and better didn't you come in fourth quarter yeah, I come in in November. I haven't been here yeah. a year yet. I'm working on it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have one more question. <clears throat> in reading the, the report, it says the management's corrective action plan is to uh, implement standard operating procedures and checklists to ensure all necessary year. If these are standard operating procedures, is there a, a reason they weren't why, why are we now implementing standards? Because I just, I just got here. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the answer. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I wrote, I wrote that that management's corrective action, but okay. that's me. That's me writing so it. So it wasn't here before you, and you're implementing it now. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, concerns, or comments, Trustee Granquist? None for me. Trustee Trailer? No. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? No. Trustee Wakeman? No. Trustee Rodriguez? No, but I just want to say thank you to both Wade, Courtney, and Tyra for your guys' help. Yep. I'll second that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hi. I'll take a uh, motion to accept the 2019 audited financial statements. So move. Second. second. Third. Acting town clerk, please take a vote. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. Trustee Grandquist? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Uh, Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. And Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. 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 Okay, we've got resolution 2023 declaring Board of Trustee Vacancy. Cheryl Powell, town, interim town administrator. Yes, ma'am. Um, with uh, Scott Smith's resignation and um, the fact that it was handed out um, on September 23rd, uh, more or less after we started recording the meeting, I believe we had an executive session prior to, um, mm -hmm. and then it was handed out thereafter. Um, it's always good to um, have something in our documents stating that this is truly what happened and when, so therefore the resolution. Okay. <clears throat> Any discussion? Uh, Trustee uh, Rodriguez? I have nothing to add. Trustee Wakeman? Yeah, I have a question. If, it, if the resignation came in after the board meeting, and do we have to go back that far to, um, I guess technically the board didn't receive it that night. We didn't receive it until the next meeting, right? The resignation um, letter was written September 22nd, and it was handed, um, I believe, to the mayor on the 23rd. Mm -hmm. So uh, upon acceptance of that resignation letter, it, it starts to count the, the count. OK. I think it was after the meeting, that. Right? It, was, it was after the meeting, but it was on the 23rd, so that starts to count. OK. Uh, if I could just comment very briefly, the key is that we need to set a date uh, because we have a deadline within which to act, and the safest date to pick is the is the earliest date, which is the 23rd. So uh, we're just trying to protect any action that happens from this point forward. Okay. Um, 
Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich, any questions? I have none. Trustee Trailer. Yeah, so this, this says that um, anyone who's a resident of Millican for how long can? 12 months. 12 months can, um, what do they do? They send in a? Application. And sometimes the application and a resume. Okay. And so it's been posted in Jazz Town Breeze. It's been on our website and on our Facebook page. Um, pretty much right when I received notification. Oh, okay. I think it was like 24th, maybe. And we had it on our, um, if not that day. Yeah, okay. I believe it was 24th. Mm -hmm. And if the applications are being accepted on October 16th, which is this Friday, 5 o'clock. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Trustee Grenquist, any questions? No questions for me. I will accept a motion to accept for resolution 2023. I motion we accept resolution number 20-23. Second. Acting Town Clerk, please take a vote. <coughs> Trustee Wingman? No. Trustee Grandquist? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. Mayor <coughs> Hilton? Ehrlich? Yes. And Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Resolution 2024 in support of the Millican Police Department. <clears throat> Is a resolution of the town of Millican, Colorado declaring support and appreciation for the Millican Police Department. Whereas the dedicated members of the Millican Police Department serve and protect our citizens and ensure that Millican community is healthy and safe every day. And whereas our law enforcement officers endure long shifts and demonstrate the utmost professionalism and integrity when operating under extreme pressure and often dangerous and unpredictable circumstances. And whereas the brave men and women of the Millican Police Department dedicate themselves and risk their lives so that we can live in peace and security and so Millican is a safe and desirable place to live, work, and visit. And whereas the Millican Police Department plays an integral role in our community and its members deserve the deepest respect and gratitude for their service. And whereas the Millican Police Department provides a school resource officer to our local schools, thereby enriching the lives of our children and creating a safe space for all who enter our schools. And whereas the Millican Board of Trustees supports the Millican Police Department and all of its members who stand each day as guardians of the peace and safety ready to protect the community and who remain steadfast in upholding the core values of fairness, impartiality, integrity, and respect and the diligent pursuit of justice. Now therefore be it resolved by the town of Millican, Well County, Colorado that the mayor and board of trustees of the town of Millican declare and acknowledge their support and appreciation for the commitment and sacrifice made by each and every member of the Millican Police Department. The board of trustees asks that all citizens join the board in giving the dedicated professionals of the Millican Police Department much deserved support and appreciation. This resolution become effective immediately upon adoption. I'll move to accept this resolution, number 20-24. A second. Acting Town Clerk, please take a vote. Trustee Grandquist? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. And Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Next item on the agenda is consideration for approval of ordinance number 785. This is our solicitation ordinance. Uh, Matthew Gould, <coughs> town attorney. Yes, thank you, Mayor Austin. Uh, this item was prompted by a 10th Circuit Court of Appeals case that came out several months ago. Uh, we've met and discussed this in work sessions a couple of times, and what's resulted is a relatively, m what I would call, minor amendment to the solicitation provisions in the Millican Municipal Code. Um, a couple of things that, that we have accomplished here. We have uh, clarified some of the provisions, so it's clear what is and is not exempt from the registration requirements. And we've also clarified that the curfew applies to any solicitor. 
which essentially makes it content neutral. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, opening for discussion and questions, starting with Trustee Wakeman. Um, I do not have any questions tonight on this. Trustee Rodriguez? No questions. Trustee Trailers? Okay, I do. <laughs> okay, so on D, is unlawful for any person to engage in residential door-to-door -door solicitation before the hours of 9 a.m. and after the later, the, I'm sorry, latter of 7.30 p.m. or one half hour after sunset, Monday through Saturday. Sunday solicitation hours are from noon to five. Okay. That's, I was just confused. The, the sunset thing always throws me off. And so, okay. So it's either 7.30 or sometimes sunset comes earlier, right? But if it comes later, so it has to be at 7.30, even if sunset's later. <laughs> no, it would be the later. So uh, if sunset comes after 7.30, it would be sunset. One of the reasons uh, that, that was raised by the Tenth Circuit case uh, that one of the things that was an issue was that these solicitors wanted to be able to solicit after dark or later into the evening because that's when people were home. And so without stretching or changing our ordinance too much, I think there's kind of a minor effort to accommodate that here. Okay. I so it would be the later, I mean, if, if, if uh, sunset's after 7.30, it would be one half hour after sunset. So it could be in the summer, 9.30. Could be. I don't agree with that. What do you guys think? <laughs> it's really late to get a solicitor. Yes, but better than getting sued. That is true. And if you don't want people at your door, then you probably you should have just a no put solicitation the sign. On. sign. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, just, just one more comment. This was a very yeah. lengthy Tenth Circuit uh, opinion that had a lot of content in it, and I don't want to leave the impression that we've addressed everything that that court raised, but we've just tried to touch some high points here without recognizing the fact that I don't think we really have trouble with our solicitation ordinance or any severe complaints about it. Yeah. Have so. we had any complaints? Okay. That's true. Okay. Trustee Granquist, any questions, concerns, or comments? None for me. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? I have none. Okay, hearing no further uh, discussion, I'll take a motion. Make a motion we approve Ordinance 785. Second. Acting Town Clerk, please take a vote. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. Trustee Trailer? No. Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. <coughs> Trustee Granquist? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the Roxall contract agreement with Wade Nurkerson, Finance Director. <coughs> Good evening again. Uh, this item is uh, we're requesting an amendment to the uh, professional services contract with Roxall for the uh, Millican Pathways, the uh, TAP grant project. <coughs> uh, what this was was we had a contract, we have a contract with Roxall uh, for the management services on this contract, and it was a do not, uh, not to exceed amount. And so what we're bringing it back to the board in order to uh, request that we ex uh, amend this contract for $4,908 uh, to get this project finished out. Um, the project is currently under budget. We're going to finish, uh, we assume we're going to finish under budget. We're still waiting for a few bills from the railroad. But um, 
Roxall's contract come in um, substantially lower than what was originally budgeted for the construction management. Um, and so, like I said, we're, we feel like we're still going to be under budget on the project, but we need to bring it back to you for your approval uh, to amend the contract because uh, it was that do not not to exceed amount. Uh, but yeah, I would recommend recommend your approval on this so we can get this project out the door. <laughs> Questions from the board, Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? No. Justy Trailer? No, oh, I think saving money is great. <laughs> Thanks, Wade. None for Just, me. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's okay. Close enough. <laughs> Justy Rodriguez? No questions. Justy Wakeman? No questions. I have a question, uh, Scott Clem. Will you be inspecting the work when they're done? We've already done a final inspection. We have the only thing outstanding on this project is some much less items the railroad has given us, but we're actually in compliance with the MUTC standards on that. And we're just trying to finalize that with the railroad now. So basically, our project is finalized on this at this point. And the reason we backed this because, as you guys well know, this project's kind of been tough from the get go. Yeah. And they've done a very good job coming in managing a project that they can design for us. There was some design flaws in the plans compared to what would actually work out here. So okay. that's why we we're recommending this. It was, they did manage a very good project for us. So. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hearing that, no further questions. I'll take a motion. I move to authorize the acting town administrator to sign the amendment with Roxall Consulting Group, Inc. for $4,908. Second. Acting town clerk, please take a vote. Uh, Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. Trustee Grandquist? Yes. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. And Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion passed. <coughs> Next item is the acknowledgement of receipt of the 2021 proposed budget. Wade Nickerson, finance director. Yeah, so uh, earlier this evening, uh, before the work session, we handed out the uh, budget, uh, proposed budget uh, workbooks to, to the board. Um, we're planning for the public hearing on that budget to be November 10th, and then again, December 9th is the latest date to adopt that budget. Um, as discussed in the work session, I will uh, put together a memo highlighting the major changes and get that get that to the board um, ahead of our October 28th discussion. Okay. Any questions, uh, Trustee Wakeman? Are copies available at Town Hall for any citizens that yes want copies? Trustee Rodriguez? I have no questions. Trustee Granquist? None for me. Trustee Trailer? None. And Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? None. I'll take a motion to acknowledge the receipt of the 2021 proposed budget. I move to acknowledge the receipt of the proposed 2021 budget. Second. Acting Town Clerk, please take a vote. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee uh, Granquist? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. And Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, Thank discussion you. agenda. Thank you, Wade. Thank you. On the discussion agenda, we have our code section 16 2 490 fences and walls. Uh, Pepper McClanahan, our Community Development Director. Good evening, Mayor and Trustees. We have a citizen who has submitted a fence permit, um, albeit after the fact the, the structure, we'll just call it a structure, went up uh, without a permit. Um, in reviewing our current code, there were a couple of things that were obviously non-compliant. The arbor, which has now been uh, reduced down to the maximum front fence uh, allowance of 42 inches is now gone. Um, however, 
this property is zoned MUCD. And uh, I did provide a copy of our fence code. There's a couple of sections that staff is seeking some guidance on. I'm not really sure how to classify this structure, whether it's legitimately a fence. It is not comprised necessarily of standard fencing material. Um, there's also a concern that it might be constructed partially in the right of way of Broad Street. Uh, although it is in line with other fences that appear to have maybe been built within our right of way as well. It is not um, anchored in terms of, it's not in concrete. Um, and the letter that, that accompanied the fence permit, retroactive fence permit, uh, is included in your packet. So, um, and the horizontal supports, shall we say, are um, secured with hemp twine and finishing nails. And so, staff's concerns were a couple of things. First of all, if this would be durable enough to withstand the elements and not end up becoming a nuisance in terms of falling into the sidewalk or into the street. But also on the very, on the third page of the fence ordinance are additional requirements for the downtown area. And it says the use of mis materials not customarily used for fencing shall not be permitted. So we've gotten a lot of feedback on this structure. It's, um, it's very unusual and it's, um, by some folks, you know, standard is it's very aesthetically pleasing. Um, I, I frankly am seeking your input as to whether we should issue a fence permit for this, whether this should be uh, permitted, whether we consider this um, art or part of landscaping, which really isn't um, necessarily identified in our code. And um, so, I just thought I'd bring this before you and see what your imp input and feedback was for staff. It's, um, a, it's a little between the lines. And our code says pressure treated wood. This is not pressure treated wood. Isn't that correct? Correct. Was this picture taken before the windstorm? Uh, yes, I believe that it was and I have not checked to see if there were any um, damages afterwards. I think one of my big safety concerns with arbors has been removed, which is the the top branches that were just kind of stuck up on top of that arbor, which looked like they might be able to come down and hit someone on the head. But since it's been reduced down, that um, safety concern has been remediated. Oh, okay, so this this isn't there. That pergola thingy isn't there. Cor correct. Correct. Right, yep, that was just removed probably in the last yeah. two days. Okay. So let's go around for some questions. Trustee Grantwist. I don't have very many questions to me. I, I, as long as it's not presenting a safety hazard to the sidewalk, I don't <coughs> see any problem with it. Um, um, Trustee Trailer. It looks more like an art. Like, I don't know. But I guess like if it blows over in the wind, it blows over in the wind. Or, I mean, do they plan on putting it back up? Like is this? If it becomes a nuisance, issue. then they would be cited and would be required to abate the nuisance. I mean, do you think it needs concrete to hold it all in? It probably would make it a little more stable. There isn't anything necessarily in the fence code that deals with, that talks about um, anchoring or oh. horizontal support. We don't quite get that detailed and we don't really address fences in building code. So again, this is why this is a little between the, between the lines and it definitely is, is not customarily used fencing material. Um, I, was back in the day. I think it's worth mentioning that if a builder is doing this, 
we might have a different reaction than if the homeowner yeah. or resident is doing it. We are willing to take that part down. <coughs> I think it's okay. Um, any more questions? I don't have any questions. Trustee Wakeman. I guess my concern would be, I think it's okay. Um, the, the length of survival of, and you know, if they maintain it, keep it looking at least as good as it does now, then it's not such a concern, but I fear they've won't, so. Trustee Rodriguez. Did anybody ask the homeowner why they chose this particular fence? There was a tree in their yard that had to come down and it was, you know, maybe just a craft project for them to like. utilize the materials from that tree and constructed this, I'm going to call it a structure because I really don't think it qualifies as a fence and from my standpoint, I would prefer not to issue a fence permit. So if it was allowed to stay, it would need to be classified as something else because I don't believe it meets our fence code. That's, that's my professional input. Is it something they can put in the backyard to still mm -hmm. keep the thought of the tree? They have an existing fence in the back that's a six foot privacy fence. So they, I guess, could put it there for their own use and enjoyment. It wouldn't be visible Mayor Pro I don't know what to say. I mean, <laughs> you look at what we had in the past. We had a, a hubcap fence out here yeah. on the east side of town. We had an issue with the purple picket fence. Uh, we had an issue, I believe, at the Heritage House not being able to have a fence. And uh, so I don't know where this one comes into play. I think that's uh, out of my expertise area. I'll let the town staff handle that one. <laughs> I, think, I think the issue here is it's unusual, it's unique, mm -hmm. and for a small town we like unique things. If we call it a fence, then where does the next person take this? And then the next person after that, and, and where do we have that, that cut off before we've got, you know, odd, odd structures? So I would agree, I don't think we can call it a fence. However, um, it is a front yard decoration. That's what I and art. It, it's <laughs> art. And, yeah, Can't judge art. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I would strongly discourage the town staff from issuing a fence permit as this because you then set a standard, and then, you know, where where do we go with our next standard? But that's just my opinion. So I would agree to that. And I think <clears throat> the, the purpose of the fence permit, I would understand it to be because, because it is more permanent, you don't want a fence in an area that you're going to have to, you know, perform some kind of a maintenance on or do something to. But I'm, I'm not seeing this as highly permanent. Yeah. Um, it's thrifty. It, it, yeah. <laughs> I like it. Go ahead when you're done. Go ahead. No. The reason we enacted fence permits is because we never used to have them. And the park over there at, uh, what is it, Juneberry? And what is that park called? Mountain View. Mountain View. Yeah. The neighbors put up fences there and they put the posts through our town's sprinkler water lines because they weren't on the property lines. Mm -hmm. So the reason we enacted a fence permit is so we could go out and identify boundaries, property lines, and get the fence on the right spot. Not to tell them what kind of fence they could have or what they couldn't have. Right. It was for location right. and keep them in, on their property lines and, right. and not interfere with water Easements lines and stuff and like that. that. Yeah. So that's when we enacted the fence permit. Well, the reason why we brought this to you is because obviously this took somebody quite a long time to construct. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, um, the imagination behind it um, it's, it's unique. Staff 
really didn't have the heart to go there and say, no. I know it's on your property, it's not a fence, we need you to take it down. Because it's really, at this point, not hurting anybody. It's for this property owner's pleasure only. And it's not, it's not unsightly. Um, so, in issuing an offense permit, would be giving permission for this type of structure. And um, so, we figured it would be a good discussion topic. Maybe a good thing to look at the land use code when we get that. Um, um, and maybe even put a provision in somewhere, um, or not. Maybe you just be opening a can of worms if you do. Yeah, I just yeah. yeah. Consider it art. Call it and, good. And I think the other issue was most of the subdivisions, the HOA tells you what kind of fence you can have and what you can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like I said, that's, that's the reason we enacted the fence permit is so we knew where it was being installed and not interfering with the town's water lines. Right. And I remember many of those breaks at Mountain View. Yeah, I would just give him some feedback that. Please don't paint it. Yeah, <laughs> stain fine. Just don't don't paint it. Don't yeah. Leave it as art. What color? Okay. <laughs> and, and also the idea of maintenance. And if it right. starts to look disheveled, then it will need to be removed. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And one last bit of um, information I'd like to provide everybody is that our code enforcement officer, Lori Oleg, is retiring. What? Um, I believe it's December 11th. Mm -hmm. Is the, her last day. So, um, anyway, it will be, Benny and I have been um, speaking about what we'd like to do um, after that occurs. So. All right. How long has she been with us? 16 years total in Millican, but Five, five or six for the last. Yeah. Wow. Five, five, yeah, five or six years. Could we recognize her here? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you want her autograph, just park your trailer for 72 hours. <laughs> 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 Congratulate her. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, she's done a great job. <laughs> any other, any other uh, business to be brought before the board? <laughs> Hearing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Uh, oh. We do the information. Did I miss that? That's a written report. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I move to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're done. We are done.